Welcome back to Kenshi. In the last video, we saved Beep from the clutches of the Holy Nation. But that's not all. So far, we've escaped from slavery, built a base, started a drug cartel, and now, with a decisive victory at Rebirth under our belt, my squad's ego has expanded to unfathomable levels. Now, we have the money, strength, and size to set our sights on bigger, juicier targets. Specifically, Emperor Tengu, leader of the United Cities. Unsurprisingly, my squad was still coping, seething, and molding about the whole slave thing. But with our copium tanks running empty, there was no option left but to travel to and even the odds. Things weren't going to be easy though. There were bigger forces in Kenshi than those at Reba. And given the fact that Heft is literally the capital of the United Cities, the forces guarding the city were bound to be far, far tougher than anything we've encountered before. Surely a strategic and methodical approach here would be the best course, right? Wrong. An army of a couple dozen versus the literal capital of a slaver nation empire? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. And so with our plan in place, we approach the city ready to squash the samurais and capture Tengu. And so the next morning, we began our assault. Okay, things hadn't exactly played out like I had planned. I assumed Heft wouldn't be much of a challenge, but clearly, I thought wrong. With no options left, I headed back home, but even with my squad back inside the base, it hit me just how cold and empty the place felt. Not to mention how prone it was to being raided, but fortunately, I can upgrade the base and fill it with more recruits. But here's my problem, I need a name. Without one, my thought continues to feel a bit lacking in the personality department. This is where you come in. Get that supple, delicate hand of yours, smack it on your mouse, scroll down to the comments, this bit just here, now type, hmm, it is my humble opinion that the base in which these jovial characters reside should be called, and then your name of choice. But please do not add any words like this, this, and especially not this. The comment with the most likes will decide what the base will be called. But back to the video. The fort is in dire need of a long overdue upgrade. Clearly, we have the money. So what's taken me this long to increase the base's size and output? Laziness. But today, that changes. If we're going to start a war with the Holy Nation in the United Cities, we need a strong base of operations. That means more money, more food, and more defense. I started by sending Molly and Beep out to get engineering research, ancient science books, and some standard books in order to allow me to research upgrades for the base. At first I came across this weird little workshop in the middle of nowhere. Inside was a self-proclaimed armor king, who wouldn't shut up about how great his armor was. Naturally, I decided to try and kill him, but he was right. Molly's squishy little human fists were nothing compared to his unbeatable armor. And so we were beaten up and thrown out but we'll be back. I continued on the journey, visiting abandoned workshops and spooky old forts, gradually amassing more and more research and books as I went. Eventually though, after entering one of the ancient buildings, I ran into a quirky group of simp bots, each one more desperate than the last. Ha! Don't make me laugh, you gutless simp. These strange fellas would follow my every move, announcing Molly as their master. And caught up in their blind devotion to Molly, they didn't realize they were following her straight into a nest of mechanical spiders. Despite their best efforts to defend my queen, they were annihilated by the spiders and left in puddles of their own oil. Although I tried my best to heal all of them, the spiders kept rebooting and would slowly drain the life of my creepy stalkers. Even with the chaos though, I did manage to save one simp bot, who I named Simpbot 3000. The 3000 of course, being a reference to the number of cats he donated to Molly in a somewhat successful attempt to win her attention. I brought him back and used the research I had acquired to completely renovate the base. The first and most notable change being the long overdue upgrade to the base's walls. I set up some stronger walls, expanded the territory, and created a stronger turret defense leading to the entrance, and built a turret tower for stronger firepower. These changes made it near impossible for any raids to actually enter the base. Moving on to the inside of the base, I set up three more wheat fields to massively increase food production, along with two automated flour silos to grind wheat into flour, plus an extra bread oven. 
along with some baskets. I upgraded the research bench, added some smaller, more efficient wind turbines, along with batteries to sustain us with extra charge for when wind levels were low. I also set up a proper sleeping area to allow my squad to heal from fights faster. And finally, I set up some more prisoner cages, both inside and on top of the prison tower, and even got the running water going. But how was I affording these luxuries? Well, I also massively expanded my hashish production, starting by adding some more hashish processing machines. I then added some more storage and planted way, way more crops over here on the other side of the river. You may have also noticed the cool bridges I set up for easier access across the river. Pretty based, if you ask me. With the increased output of hashish and the newfound knowledge that the Flats Lagoon buys hashish at a 400 times the price markup, we were in business. I sent Shira off with a huge backpack full of drugs, ready to exploit the people of Flats Lagoon. Since I had a ton of hashish on me, and the Lagoon folk were willing to buy it at such a steep price, I literally took every bit of money they had. And in exchange, they received brown brick. Having plundered all of the Lagoon's money, I bought Shira a seemingly appropriate pirate hat and sent her back home ready to refill. The base was growing, but I needed workers. Luckily, the new and improved base defense meant I had a near constant pile of dying Shek to imprison. After a healthy amount of exposure to propaganda and the promise of food, almost all of the Shek I had imprisoned were ready to join my cause. So just how many did I hire? Eh. A few. So with more physical territory, stronger defense, a solid trade route, and a decent army, I was ready to once again attempt to take down Heft. With the sun rising and the video coming full circle, we were back at where we began on the border of Heft. This time, even more eager for victory, we began the attack.
God. It just works.